Hey, it's Zach from HowTo. A few years ago, I had the idea to build a Raspberry Pi computer into an NES cartridge for a super compact retro setup. I called it the Pi Cart. You know, like pies on a cart. After blowing up on Reddit, it quickly became one of our most popular guides on HowTo. You know, until that other one. Anyways, some guy made a Kickstarter, there are tons of them on Etsy and eBay, and one thing I always wanted to do was create a video for it. And I never got the chance until now. So what is the Pi Cart? In a nutshell, it's an original Nintendo cartridge containing a tiny $10 Raspberry Pi computer. This computer runs the popular emulation software known as RetroPie. The Raspberry Pi then connects directly to your TV or computer monitor, allowing you to play thousands of your favorite retro games. Now obviously a couple years ago, I created a text and photo based version of this guide that I put in the video description. There you'll find a list of all the tools and materials you'll need as well as links to buy them. So buckle up while I show you how to build your own Pi cart. When you're done, you'll be able to load it with ROMs, connect it to your TV, and enjoy that sweet, sweet 8-bit life. So these are all the parts that you're gonna need for your Pi cart, an NES cartridge of some kind. I recommend getting a crappy title. This one was like $2 at the uh, video game store locally. Uh, you don't wanna mess up like a really good game. For the original one, I used this really terrible Back to the Future game made by LJN, which is the worst. So I found this one I've never even heard of, Silent Service. Seems really bad. So you're also gonna want a Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is the one that has uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and this little $10 computer is gonna run everything. Um, you'll also want a small heat sink, a micro SD card. Size isn't super important. The old ROMs were really small because memory chips were expensive, so they, the games are actually really tiny, but uh, maybe get like a 16 gig. So you'll also need this Amazon Basics Hub. This is like 10 bucks on Amazon, maybe less. And then a couple of cables. Um, this cable is the mini HDMI to HDMI cable. So this will extend from the Pi out to where you'll plug into your TV. And then this little cable will actually extend the power so you can plug your power adapter in here. And then of course you need an AC adapter itself to plug into that. Uh, one quick note, the hub actually isn't necessary if you wanna just have one controller or if you wanna have one normal controller and a Bluetooth controller. So you can always do away with the hub. The whole point of the hub is so you can plug additional things in, but you don't really need to do that necessarily if you're playing by yourself or if you wanna use Bluetooth controllers, you can have a whole bunch of those. And I actually have a guide on how to uh, integrate Bluetooth controllers in RetroPie in the video description. You're also gonna need a few basic tools, but if you don't have these, you can improvise. Um, you'll definitely want a box cutter or some kind of sharp knife that you can use to cut the cartridge slightly or a Dremel or something. Um, a little screwdriver. This is actually a Nintendo security screwdriver. They like to use those weird screws to prevent people from opening things up. Um, I'll show you a way you can kind of make your own maybe as well. And then uh, something to cut wires with. Now this project doesn't require any soldering at all, which is important to note. Um, but you can solder things if you want to make like a little bit of a cleaner setup. Now before you get started, you're going to want to install RetroPie. Um, you don't want to put this in here and then have to take it back apart to install RetroPie on the SD card. Now I'm not going to cover that in this video because it's really a step-by-step -step software process. I'd like to do another video for that, but I do have a link in the video description to a guide that I wrote that'll tell you step-by-step. -step. Only takes about 10 minutes and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so you can use your security screwdriver to remove these screws. But I've also heard that you can make your own with like an old toothbrush and then you kind of sharpen it like a prison shank and then you heat it up and you like stick it in there and try to turn the screws. So I'm going to try that. I've never actually done it before. Uh, I'm going to use an old pencil sharpener. Maybe this will work. I don't know, honestly. Let's see. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess I'll use this box cutter cut away from yourself. Oh God. So I think some, um, I think some toothbrushes are like a softer plastic. Maybe you want to use one of those. Like those soft white ones. All right, it's pretty shanky. So I'm just gonna go ahead and heat it up with a lighter. And stick it on there before it dries. Now supposedly it'll harden into the shape of this little end, just like kind of a flower shape. So while that's happening, I'll go ahead and remove the other ones. 
Some people like to replace these with normal Phillips head screws if you want to open this regularly, um, but honestly, I've never really needed to open it. All right, let's see if that worked. Huh, how about that? Totally worked. I'm actually very surprised. It looks like it actually created that shape. It's definitely not as easy, but it does work. Look at that. Wow. All right, so you can make your own uh, or buy this one for $5, which is useful if you open things that Nintendo makes all the time. Okay, then the cartridge opens up. So um, this is the entire game. It's actually really small. Nintendo chose this weird long cartridge so they could have that front insertion mechanism to make it feel more like a VCR to people in the US and less like, let's say, Atari or one of the other failed video game companies that caused the video game crash. So they kind of want it to be different, but in Japan, they're like small little cartridges. And right here, this is the NES lockout chip, which is how Nintendo was able to enforce that their games were super high quality. I mean, obviously some didn't make it, but overall, the video game crash from 1983 was caused by like a flood of games on the market. And Nintendo helped to revive the whole industry. And um, they did this by using the lockout chip so they could limit the supply of these there had to be a matching one in the Nintendo console itself. And this actually led to a, a re revision of how the US Patent Office handles software patents because Nintendo had filed this, like the, the software that helps to decode this and make the connection. And um, Tengen, Tengen, that company that made the really weird knockoff cartridges that were like blue or a strange shape, they just asked the Patent Office for the patent documents and then use that to reverse engineer and make their own chips. So it's kind of interesting. Um, anyways, this is pretty much useless now. Okay, now in order to make room here, basically the hub is gonna go on the bottom and then all the cables and everything. So we need to remove these two bottom little plastic strips here. And I'm gonna very carefully do this with my box cutter. You can also use a Dremel, but once you cut the edges and score it, it's actually really easy to break off. Yeah, see this just snaps right away now. That's it. Okay, so everything is going to mount to the top, the one with the label, so we can take the bottom and set that aside for now. Now the next thing we're gonna do is disassemble the USB hub. So you can use other USB hubs too. This one's from Amazon, it's Amazon Basics. It's about as cheap as it gets. Um, so I like using this one and it's very small and very inexpensive. So we're gonna pull the case apart. Now there's an LED in the top here. If you wanted to, you could drill a hole in your case, stick the LED through, and then when it has power, it'll light up. I added a, a separate LED right oops, on my other one right here, which is kind of nice. It has like a little glow on the bottom. And I have a guide on how to do that. I won't cover that in this video because it requires soldering and I don't wanna get into that right now. I'm trying to get this as accessible as possible. But if you want, I'll have a link in the video description for adding that, or you could drill a hole and add your own. But I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this LED um, because I don't want it on here. The problem is it won't fit with the case. So you can just clip this off or break it off with a pair of pliers. Um, as long as you're careful, it won't damage the board. Or you could desolder it here by removing these two points and just pull it out. I'm just gonna pry it off carefully with my clippers. Cut it. Careful not to cut anything else on the board. And then you'll just have two leads that go nowhere now. Now, as far as securing this, you can use hot glue. You can use foam tape. I like hot glue because it's a very low uh, form factor. This doesn't get that hot. And if you ever want to remove hot glue, you can just add a couple drops of acetone and it'll come right off. So I'm going to put this right up to the edge here and add a little bit of hot glue or a lot of hot glue because why not? Okay, secure this right in the edge. It's funny, it actually fits perfectly in this groove right here. Okay, now we're gonna secure our other two ports. So this is the power. This is the uh, HDMI. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue those down as well. You can also use super glue. Oh yes. Now a lot of people ask if you need like cooling in here. 
honestly, you don't. It doesn't get that hot, really. Um, it's not like it's a Raspberry Pi 3. Raspberry Pi Zero is way less powered. That's why it's great for retro games. And also, there is actually quite a bit of ventilation in the front here that's created by this, this gap that's left. So um, I've run mine for hundreds of hours at this point, and I haven't had any issues with heat. And the heat sink is definitely enough to reduce the lag. A lot of kits that you buy will come with um, the Pi and a heat sink and these adapters, well, some of them. Um, this little micro USB extension cable is a little more specialized, so I haven't found any kits that have this. I was actually thinking about selling a kit for this project on, on How Chew. I don't know if anybody's interested. Let me know in the comments, and uh, maybe I could put one together and, and see how it does. And of course, put your micro SD card in. Now, as far as securing this, um, I like to use double-sided foam tape, like the good stuff, and it's pretty heat resistant. You can also use hot glue, but I just like the foam tape makes it easier to remove and it also provides a bit of shock absorption. I mean, this thing is pretty robust as you know, but uh, it's a nice thought. So I'm just gonna use foam tape. Now, if you cut near your board, make sure you don't cut any traces. You know, the little wires that are on there, just cut very lightly. And then I'm going to secure it so that the ports face that way, so the cables can be plugged in. Oh, there's actually one little plastic peg here that you have to break off as well. You can do that with your fingers, done. Or uh, you can cut it. Okay, now I'm gonna mount it so that when I plug the HD my mini HDMI cable in here, it uh, won't hit this peg in the middle. So it would probably be easiest to connect this first. Okay, so just get these cables out of the way. Press it down. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and plug the power extension cable in. The power port in the Pi Zero is all the way at the top here, furthest from the HDMI port. That's pretty clean. Now, there's no full-size USB port on the Pi Zero, so we're also gonna need some sort of adapter. Um, I forgot to mention that earlier, but it is listed in the parts list and in the uh, photo and uh, text-based version of this guide. So they, they sell these small little tiny adapters that will actually connect it right here. It's one slides in here, one slides in here. I had a bunch of those and I can't find them anymore. So I'm gonna use a full size extension. So you'll end up with more cables in here in my build, but when you do your own, it's much cleaner. If you have a soldering iron, you can also cut up a micro SD cable, desolder this, solder it on here, and then you'd have like a small little run. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna use a larger adapter. It'll look a bit messier, but I'll also link to the, uh, the little tiny one that you can use. It'll just like stick right in here and then you're done. Man, I really can't wait until they just put USB-C ports on the uh, the Pi and then everything will go that way. So this is a uh, micro USB to USB adapter. And we connect this here. Now again, if you didn't want the USB hub, if you only wanted one port, then you could very easily get rid of this hub and just run this guy right out here. And then you would have just the one port that you need to plug in a USB controller other people can connect via Bluetooth. Um, you can also use this to um, connect a USB drive to transfer ROMs. Although honestly, you really don't need access to this port at all. You could just omit this, use a Bluetooth controller, connect to your Pi wirelessly to transfer ROMs over your network. Um, there are a million ways to do it, but I, I like this, it's nice. Um, anyways, now we have this big thing that's hard to fit in here because I didn't have the adapter. Not ideal, but it will fit. Okay, so if you wanted to add a power LED you would actually solder it directly to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. That's general purpose input output header. You can connect a lot of different things to this. So you connect to LED, you can connect a power switch to turn it on and off. I'm gonna leave some links in the video description to do those things and, and cover that in another video. Okay, when you're done, just put the case back together. There are tabs here. There's a peg here that goes here. So make sure you don't block this with a cord or just use that small adapter when you order your parts and you'll be good to go. Looks like a normal game, but it's not. Ha ha! Look at that. So, let's plug it in and see how it plays. Okay, now I've got the Pi Cart plugged into my TV with my AC adapter, and I've got my USB controller. So let's go ahead and play some silent service. <laughs> I guess it's a submarine simulator. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. We do cool projects like this all the time. And also check out our website, howtrue.com. There you'll find tons of projects and guides that we don't usually make videos for, 
Over time, we want to make videos for all of them, but for now, there are hundreds of guides on there that we won't have on here. And as always, thank you very much for watching.